back of morning. So at the moment we're in kind of a pretty summertime, so it's like about 30 degrees C outside, so we really get some really warm days. So in order to kind of not have the oven going quite so much, I'm kind of baking two loaves at once. So um, making a bigger mix and what have you, and then kind of using the oven for you know about an hour or so and doing two loaves rather than kind of getting it going twice in the week. So I'll show you the process now for making two loaves at once. So here we go. So starter in first of all, I'm gonna use about 200 grams worth of starter in here. So just put the starter in. This is, I put this on last night. And so nice and bubbly. Double in size, so I'll put that in here. So this is a light rice starter I've got in here at the moment. So we're getting towards it there. I'm never kind of too exact on starters because I think you know it's kind of close enough. It's fine for that. So there we go, 190. That's fine. I'm happy with that. Got enough left in here to make another starter. Keep it in the fridge. So now to make this, I'm actually going to use a different technique now. Rather than doing like an auto those, I'm actually going to put the water in here with the starter and give the mix around. So I want roughly from here now, 720 grams of water to add in here. So this is for two loaves. So around about like a 700, sorry, 73% or 75% hydration roughly in here. Okay, that's pretty good on there, happy with that. So what we're gonna just take off of the scales now and we just mix that around. So now just basically just go through and just mix that around it so it kind of mixes in with the water. We're in the summertime here now, so I'm going to kind of adjust slightly my kind of timings for things. The house is getting to about 25, 28 degrees sometimes, so things are kind of going a lot faster than they would do in the winter time. So this method's working really well for me in the high temperatures. So once you're happy, that's kind of pretty much gone all the way through from there. Then we can add in the flour. So that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. And so now for my flour, I actually measured this out previously. So I've got a half and half mix here now. So 50% um, organic bread flour and 50% um, of a wholemeal flour. This is a three malts and some flour. I really like this organic rye flour. Really great. So half and half it means I'm going to get a nice tasty healthy mix but a little bit lighter as well. So kind of a nice compromise on all those things. So now basically just go through and I'm going to add my pre... So this is a kilograms worth of flour here. So kilograms worth of flour, 720 grams of water in with the 200 grams of starter. So I just add the flour in here now. I'm probably make a mess doing so. These bowls are just about big enough to actually fit two loaves in. There we go, great. So now I'm just gonna go and stir this around. So this is a technique I use more these days. So rather than autolyzing, I mix the starter in at the start. And this has been giving me really good results. And so it means I've reduced a stage in the process and I think probably I'd say I'm getting improved results. So once this is mixed together now, we're going to leave it for like maybe half an hour. You could go longer, you could go for an hour. Um, because before I do leave it, I'm going to add the salt in there. It's the one thing you don't really want to miss out. It's a, a loaf with that and your salt in it is really not very pleasant if you're used to having salt. So there you go, quite a rough mix now at the moment. And now I'm gonna put my sea salt in. So you know, this is what I like for the fact that I've got obviously two loaves in here, so twice what I would normally do. So there we go, so one, that's for one loaf, measure it out. And this is for the second loaf. Okay, that's cool. Now I'm going to go through and just mix it up. What I probably will do now is start using my hands. So this is going to get a bit messy now. Um, I'll just start to use my hands, get all that, that salt off of there. Um, that's cool. This is the messy bit, or the fun bit, where you go through and actually get a feel for it. You know, you can get a feel for the hydration in here. And this is really quite sticky right now. 
the more you work it, the more it's going to kind of come together for you. Again, we're not trying to knead it here, we're just trying to kind of mix it really, and then allow the gluten to develop pretty much by itself initially. So then we're going to add some stretch and folds in. So you can see this is a messy, messy mix here at the moment. But um, as we work it, well actually as we leave it here now for half an hour to an hour, things, it'll start to come together and things will change. So try and get all of this off again. Okay, okay so basically I'll, I'll put the lid on that now and come back to this in about half an hour to an hour's time and then we'll carry on and show you the stretch and folds developing the gluten. Thank you all. Right, that's been about half an hour now, or just over about 35 minutes, something like that. So you can see now, kind of it's coming together. So I'll do the first set of stretch and folds. Now it's quite a lot of dough in here, so normally I kind of wrap it around my hands and do it that way for the first kind of stretch and folds. But I'll have a go this way and see what happens anyway, because if not, we'll use a different technique depending on the amount. So here we go. So I'll loosen it off from the side, feeling much more pliable now. Move it from the side like that. And go. Then do a quick wrap around my hand like this. That's really coming together. So there we go. That's a really good stretch and fold there. Back in the and really happy. That's coming together really well. So there we go. I come back and do um, probably two more of those. What I'll do on the next two, I'll just show you this now ahead of time because it doesn't really matter if you do extra stretch and folds. It's not going to hurt it. So what I'll do for the next set when they're due. Is I'll pick it up in the middle here and I'll stretch it through like this, fold it over, turn it round, oops, and then do four of those. So that's what I'm going to do next next time. So this is actually pretty tight now because it's been stretched really well. So you can see probably now it's starting to relax out. See it kind of spreading out again. So I'll do that two more times, and then we should have some kind of good dough strength in there. So there you go. So we'll be back in about half an hour again, do a stretch and fold and then carry on from there. Okay, time for the second set of stretch and folds. So I'll just do a kind of more gentle one now. So again, wet my hands in here. And I'm gonna just loosen it from the edge of the bowl in here. She's feeling really good now, really coming together. It's got a kind of nice springy texture to it. So again, we can lift up from the middle, give it a good stretch like that. Same from this side. Got quite a lot of dough here now, so it's a little bit more difficult, but it's fine. This bowl's just about big enough. And you can see now the kind of the look of it, it's starting to look like a really nice dough, much more manageable and not as sticky anymore. So I'll give you one more of those, I think, and then we'll just do a quick um, window pane test on here. That's really, really good. So that's been two sets now, I'm quite pleased. So just do a quick window pane test on here, and as you can see, even though there's kind of seeds and that in here. It really is looking good. So I'd say, yeah, we're kind of at the point now where I'll probably give it one more set, but really, I think at this point now, you can say that's looking really good. There's good dough strength in there. Um, again, as I say, I'm doing it a few more times here, but you don't have to. You can never really overwork it. So, you know, if you want to get more of a feel for it, you know, then do a couple more, um, get experience on it. So there we go. So I'll leave that again for another half an hour. I think that'll be it then. I'll just leave it to do its final proof on there. So there you go. That's the um, two loaf dough in the bowl. Put the lid on, pack in a sec. Okay, back again. So this is the third set stretch and fold. So we'll, we'll just whip my hands again. Yeah. Right, we just release it from the side of the bowl. Like that. And then pick it up from the middle and then just stretch it through. So you can feel it's getting really nice and pliable now coming much easier to handle um, that's feeling I guess the more you do this the more you kind of get a feel for when it's when it's kind of feeling right and this is feeling really nice now easy to work with nice and elastic it's not sticking and you see now as it kind of relaxes it expands there so I think that's really good so we'll just do a quick window pane test on here I'm, I'm, you know i know we're okay because we've done it before on here look so that's really good here now so that's um exactly what you want so what i'll do now is i'll cover that up on it's quite warm today it's probably about 26 degrees so i'll probably come back in about three hours to this and then um 
come on to the next bit of the process. So there you go. So we've got enough for two loaves in there. So I'll show you this afternoon how to make this into or shape into two lovely loaves. So there you go. See you later. Right, so it's been about three hours now. So we just go through and um, give it a bit of a prod test. So you can sell give it a spring test on this. That's coming back, just slowly coming back when I make an indent on the house. Got it. So yeah, that's about perfect now. So that actually looks at the moment as though it's about right to go. So what we'll do is I'll, so I've got two different size balancons here. I'll kind of, I'll start with a small one first. I'll kind of, I'll pull this out on the surface and try and roughly, I'm not gonna to be too exact here in cutting it in two. It doesn't really matter too much to me. So I wet my hands and there we go. Actually pause. That's great, that's going as well. So roughly, I'm gonna kind of go for a bit of a visual Test on there, it's about right there, I think it's about in half. Great, so I'll put one to one side over here. Oop, that's great, that's great. And there, and then this one here, this will be my first one. So give us a stretch, it's actually quite sticky on here. It's been a really hot day today, but that should all be good. So basically I'm going to kind of just do a stretch across like this, on here, whilst it's on there, move that across, quite quick hands on here if you can, then put it into the seeds. So it's nicely covered in the seeds. Looks great. I already put some rice flour in the balance on, so that's been great on there. So I just wash my hands now, and I'll go through and put some more rice flour around the outside. Right, that's great. So just put a little bit around the outside, and it's help it stop it from sticking. There. That's great. Also at this end as well, sticking there. And then I'll go through and do. So I'll knit this over now. So I'll do a kind of a bit of a stitch over like this. This helps it to, to build some more, some more tension in there, the surface. And that's great. So that's one done. Really happy with that. Put a little cover on it here in the fridge next. So I'll put that to one size. I'll put it there for about 20 minutes now. That'll be great. So next one, again, put some more rice flour down in here. Some more rice flour in the basket. Give it a decent cover already on there. That's great. And then put some more seeds out. I always like to put seeds in the red. These are sunflower and pumpkin seeds. That should be great. Okay. And then back to for the half the dough. So I'm going to move this around in here. You need quite light hands for this, and actually also wet hands are good as well. So just wet your hands, give you a chance to actually move it around without sticking. There we go. So that's great on there. Stretch it out. This is it feeling really good actually on here. This is feeling really nice. Nice and elastic. Perfect. So now stretch it over, stretch it over like that, and then fold it over on here. That's beautiful. Really good. Now put some more seeds on. Roll it around in the seeds. That's great. Now into the banton. So this is actually quite a bit bigger than the banton. So what I'm going to do here. So the banton is bigger than this. So I'm actually going to kind of just give it a little bit of a hand, just to kind of like slightly move it along. To fill it out, and I go through the same process as last time. Wet your hands first, and then stitch it over like this. Feel that kind of the tension in there, and that'd be great. And what will happen? This will actually start to there, 
form into the bouncing shape. So I'm not too worried about it not covering it all over on there. Um, it'll make a lovely loaf, regardless. And it means we've got two, you know, so I've got two loaves and one of these I'll probably freeze. This one actually will be a really good one for freezing, I think, because it's going to be a slightly thinner one on there. Give it a good dusting. And that's great. It's happy with it. It's not sticking. Fantastic. And then put the cover on. Again, I'll leave this out for about 20 minutes or so, just to finally prove, and then into the coldest part of your fridge. So there you go. Two loaves ready to go in the fridge. Um, this one's uh, probably freeze. This one I'll have fresh. Um, it freezes really well generally. Um, sourdough so no issues with that and it means tomorrow I go through and I'll show you the process then of cooking how to do two loaves at one time using the challenge of bread oven so there's a kind of technique to use there to mean you're minimizing the amount of time the ovens on which is good like for, for your own economy and also to reduce the amount of heat that's getting in the house because right now we're in a really warm house and so the oven being on for a long period of time is not great for us so that will reduce that so anyway they're going to go in the fridge. I'll show you the baking tomorrow morning. So that's it. That's great. Thanks. Right, here we are. So good morning. So remember yesterday we had we made two loaves. Um, so one longer one, this one here, and the kind of shorter one there. So I'll do the longer one first. And I'll show you the process now. We're using the, we're using the Challenger bread oven. How to um, rotate the Challenger to get to put two loaves in there at the same time and make it work. So a little bit of a trick here, and it means you're reducing the amount of time the oven's on for, which is fantastic, you know? So here we go. So use your process, got rice cubes. Um, I'm sure you know what these things are by now. Um, so I just changed the blade in here, getting a bit blunt. So every now and again, change the, change the blade. Um, get some nice sharp scoring then. So here we go. Gloves, of course. So the oven's been on at 240C for about 35 minutes. And then we're gonna put our loaf in. So you put this in, just stop it sticking. Little cutting here. So the first part is pretty much the same as normal. We're gonna start off with one loaf in the oven in the Challenger. Beautiful. And today I think I'll just do, do a couple of crisscrosses on here. Maybe three, like that. Maybe four. There we go. So, give it like a bit of a French style loaf there. That's all looking pretty good. On there. Open up. Right. Ice cubes in. Three ice cubes. Sizzling away. Lid on. And so, this is now going to go in the oven at 240 for 20 minutes. So, this is the same process as we'd follow normally. Um, See, I'll put the timer on as always, he's, otherwise it's easy to forget when you're busy in the house. Oops, 21 I'll do. Great, so anyway, come back in 20 minutes and I'll show you the next bit of the, the process. Okay, that's great, that's been 20 minutes. So I'll get it out of the oven and I'll show you the process. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the oven, the bread out of the Challenger, put it on, on the rack for a couple of minutes. Then we're gonna put the second loaf in the fridge into the challenger and then give that 20 minutes and at the same time put the first loaf back in the oven so here we go let's have a look at the first one well that's looking great really beautiful on there so we'll put on the rack now and then we'll put the next one in um, for a few minutes. So I'll just do that now. Okay, that's great. So that's on the wire rack. Then you put this in the oven again in a few minutes. So again, we'll go through the second one now. So dusting on here. Three nice ice cubes in. Oops, not yet. Sorry, brushing around it. All right. So second loaf. Put that in. It's beautiful. I'll just do one nice score on this one. Just a bit of variety on there. 
that should be lovely so that's opening that well beautiful happy with that ice cubes in lid back on again and this time i'm going to put it in the side of the oven it's going to be room for the other side of it for the other loaf so this goes back in the oven instead of so you pull it in here The side of it is going to go the other way. There we are there to finish off. There we go. So it's, the oven's still at 240 on there, which I'm moving down to 220 now on there. And put the timer on. <whistles> 20 minutes, and come back. And by that time, the first loaf will have, will have finished. And the second layer will be ready to take the lid off. But there we go. So that's kind of getting two in this. So I'll, I'll give you a quick picture now of what's happening in there, kind of size wise. Um, here we go. There we go. So we've got two, got the challenger on the left hand side with the second loaf in and the first loaf on the right hand side. So we're really kind of reducing out the time it takes to um, make two loaves. So that should work out well. Oh, hey, that's great. So that's been another 20 minutes. So I just get the first one out of the oven now and we'll see how that's done. Well, so that's the that's the first loaf. So that's been in there for another 20 minutes. Looking lovely. Um, nice crumb to it. Nice and crunchy. No seeds on top. It's opened up well. Beautiful life. So that's number one of two in there. Now I'll get the second one out. This is kind of its first stage here in the challenger oven. So there we go. So that's uh, that's looking great. So that's had its 20 minutes. So I'll put it back in the oven again for another 20 minutes, and then we've got two loaves complete. Looking lovely. Open up beautifully. the oven for another 20 minutes and then we have two loaves complete so you're almost kind of saving I guess half the time in a way what you do normally and you end up with two beautiful loaves um, in just about half the time so if you're trying to be a bit more cost effective these days um, you know then this is the way to do it using the challenger oven so come back again in 20 minutes time so this is the second one in the oven now just finishing off all by itself looking really good nice rise on it Okay, great, so that's the 20 minutes up. This is the second loaf coming out of the oven. So, should be good. Looking beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, looking really nice. Um, nice crumb to it, some crunchy. Um, it's opened up really well. So what I'll do now here, is I'll just leave that on there to rest a little bit. Um, come back and I'll put that onto um, the wire rack. So here's the first one on the wire rack. We go on there. Once the once that one's cooled down, I'll I'll put this a little bit. I'll put this on the wire rack and I'll and I'll show you both of them. So looking really good. Okay, great. Just give them a couple of minutes just to cool down. So as it um, you can move it around on there. Okay, so that's it's really hot. So be careful with that. So there you go. That's the second one. And here's the. There you go. Two beautiful loaves, just different scoring techniques on there. I don't know if that they may be the same weight. The idea is that they should bo both be 850 grams. So we'll weigh them now and see where we are. Now, I, I did I did the kind of the separating out by eye, so I'm not sure what we're going to kind of come up with here. Let's see how good I am. But roughly it should be okay, good on there. So first one here, so let's look what we got on this first one. 
Okay, we'll be under here. So that's just that's 800. So this one's going to be a bit bigger on this. Obviously, didn't do a very good job with measuring that one out. So that's 880. So you see, together, both of those should give you two 850 loaves if you get the separation right. I didn't, I didn't weigh them out there. But I mean, if you were selling them kind of commercially, then 850 loaves are pretty, pretty common actually out there. So there you go, two loaves using the challenger oven. Um, in kind of roughly half the time and two great results I'll probably keep one of these for the week to eat and slice one of them up and put it in the freezer to have in, um, in kind of reserve because sourdough freezes really really well so that's great um, have a go yourself if you've got a challenger um, touch oven then you know have a go at this technique you know you can obviously make more than this you can carry on there and make you know two four six eight ten of them using this technique there and you know reduce your time drastically and as you can see you're going to get beautiful results so go on and enjoy so thanks for watching and i'll keep on making more videos if you keep on um, showing the interest in me doing this so thanks very much